Are you buying an AMD or Intel CPU soon? Well, don't forget the CPU cooler. Stay tuned to learn how to get more bang for your buck by using an aftermarket CPU cooler. All right, today on Computer TV, we are going to talk about CPU coolers. Now, a lot of people, if you're just building a regular computer, you don't ever think about buying a CPU cooler. And the reason for that is that if you buy uh, a regular box set CPU cooler like this one right here, it comes with its own CPU cooler inside and its own fan. And uh, basically, this is what you get. Now, uh, taking a look at this, uh, it's not really that much to look at. It doesn't look that great. And uh, well, you're right, because this does not provide that much performance as far as cooling your CPU. Will it get the job done? Absolutely. It will keep your temperatures uh, within a safe range. But I'll tell you what, the cooler you keep your CPU, the more performance you're going to get. That means you can uh, give it a little bit of a higher overclock. You're also going to get your components to last longer. You will get a longer lifespan uh, if they run cooler throughout the entire time that you're using them. So it is a good idea, even if you bought a box CPU and you got a box cooler in it, uh, it is, does make sense to get a bigger CPU cooler, an aftermarket CPU cooler, and there's quite a few different types. Now, uh, basically for most people out there, uh, you're usually pretty happy with this. I'm going to tell you a little about what you're going to upgrade to from here. Uh, what you're going to get either with an air cooler, a water cooler, or a Peltier unit. Now, this is for moderate overclocking. It is not for uh, the extreme overclockers that are trying to run for high benchmarks. They are going to be using very large water cooling setups with very big radiators, lots of fans, uh, and a big pump and a big loop. This is more for your casual gamer, your casual computer user, and I'm even going to tell you uh, about how you get more value by getting a bigger CPU cooler using a moderate overclock. Now, uh, you guys pretty much know what overclocking is. It's basically making your processor run a little bit faster than it's supposed to, and that gives you more performance. Now, I got two examples for you uh, to help you understand the way this works. Now, uh, talk about a Q9450. That is an Intel Core 2 quad processor. It has 12 megabytes of L2 cache, and it operates at a 1,333 megahertz frontside bus with a 2.66 gigahertz operating frequency. That sounds really complicated, but the main number you need to know is 2.66. Costs about 250 bucks that processor. Now, uh, the QX9770 is a $1,500 processor, and that one operates at 3.0. So go from 2.66 to 3.0, you're spending a lot of money. Okay, you're talking about over $1,000 bump in price just to get that little tiny bit of performance. Now, what happens is that if you spend a little bit of that money uh, on a nicer CPU cooler like one of these in front of me, you can actually do a mild overclock. And even if you're afraid of overclocking, it's only hard when you're trying to overclock really high. If you're just trying to get a moderate bump, it's really easy. And a lot of motherboards come with software. It's pretty much going to do it all for you uh, automatically. So that is a very good example. The best example, though, is the current line of processors that are out right now, the Intel Core i7 line. The 920 processor is outstanding. It operates at 2.66 gigahertz as well. Uh, but to get up to the 3.33 gigahertz 975, you're looking at another $750. And with that $750, it's just, it's literally just not worth it. You can overclock your 920 and get the exact same performance because in reality, the chips are about the same. The same amounts of cache, uh, L2 and 3, all the shared caches are the same. Everything is about the same. All you really need to do uh, is overclock it or bump up your base clock. Now, when you up, you know, you increase your base clock, you are, of course, going to produce more heat, and that's why you need uh, the better CPU cooler. Now, let's talk a little bit about CPU coolers. I'm going to put away uh, this stock one because this is what we're, we're avoiding uh, in this whole video. Now, put away the stock one. I'm going to show you some of the other coolers now. First of all, let's talk about materials, uh, and we're going to talk about air coolers, the simplest kind, basically the same type as that. This is an aluminum material here. So these fins are aluminum. Now, aluminum is not the best thermal conductor. Uh, so if you want to get a very, very mild upgrade uh, for a very slight overclock, here is a very uh, simple aluminum air cooler uh, from Ultra. And this is basically almost the same thing. It's very similar. Um, it will give you an improvement in performance, though, and that's due to a better fan, uh, better build quality, and a better design uh, that's going to you know, disperse the heat better. Now, the next step up from that uh, is a copper cooler. Copper uh, is the material. This is where it's at uh, as far as CPU coolers go. This is what's going to transfer the most amount of heat away from your computer, uh, and in turn, the fan is going to blow cool air on it from the outside of your case, and that is going to keep everything nice and cool. So here is the same thing, same model, just in copper. This is going to give you a significant uh, boost in 
increasing your cooling performance. And again, that's going to increase the lifespan of your processor. Uh, it's going to make it run for many more years than normal. Uh, so that's a big value plus. Now, the next step up from here are heat coolers that have, or CPU coolers that have heat pipes. Uh, now, this is a True 120 or Thermorite Ultra Extreme 120. Uh, this is pretty much the high end of air coolers. You put two fans on this and you have some extremely, extremely efficient uh, air cooling. You can overclock pretty moderately. I'm talking about going from 2.66 to nearly 3.8 gigahertz on an Intel Core i7-920. That's going to give you a huge bump in performance uh, and it's going to save you a ton of money by buying the really expensive 975 uh, or even a 950 or 960. You won't have to spend that much money and you get a lot of performance. Now, when it comes down to this, uh, you're looking for a few things. First is heat pipes. Heat pipes, depending on how big they are and how many they are, are going to give you uh, a certain amount of performance. Also, the quality. Uh, you really want to look into reviews on each cooler to determine if that one uh, worked out well or not because sometimes just judging by appearance uh, this looks like a pretty simple cooler and it actually performs extremely extremely well also on the bottom you're going to notice that usually it's going to be copper down here some of them will have the exposed heat pipes where it'll actually go into the base plate uh, you can tell if the finish is smooth uh, if you have a smooth finish that means that m the most amount of uh, materials actually touching the cpu heat spreader that means you're going to transfer the most amount of heat for the heat that uh, for the little spots that are in there that heat's not going to get transferred over, that is the entire purpose of thermoelectric gel or uh, thermal grease is what they call it. But basically, uh, this fills in all the spots and transfers all the temperature over from your CPU to your CPU cooler. If you have a little spot on your CPU where there's no grease and there's air there, uh, it's going to get really, really hot and you are going to damage your CPU. So uh, thermoelectric grease is another thing that you want to buy when you buy a CPU cooler. You want to get the best brand you can. And if you want to look at reviews on the internet, it's very easy to look up thermal grease reviews into Google and you'll get a bunch of different reviews. I use a Arctic Silver 5 as my preference. Uh, this is a, I believe, a thermal take one. Uh, the majority of them will work pretty good, but if you want to spend a little bit more money, uh, you will see maybe a degree or two Celsius drop in temperature, which is actually a pretty big drop. Now, uh, moving on from these air coolers that I just showed you, uh, I want to show you now a couple of very simple water cooling setups. People think that water cooling is very complicated, very difficult to jump into, uh, and it can be if you're going to go for an extreme overclocking setup. Triple radiators, lots of uh, tubing, water-cooled graphics cards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, nowadays, there are some very simple water cooling systems that are available uh, that will make everything really, really easy. So, uh, first of all, I will show you my favorite. This is a uh, a very nice little system from Corsair. This is called the H50. Basically, it is a water cooling system, except you are not creating it. It has the pump built into the base. It has a radiator and it has a fan. It's all ready to go. It's put together for you. It's really easy to mount. And basically, what you're going to do is just uh, put this on the exhaust part of your case. It's actually going to suck in cool air. Uh, and then hook this up here. It's all ready to go. Now, if you were to build your own, you'd have to have a pump separate over here. You'd have to have the actual uh, mount that goes on your CPU. And then you'd have to have the radiators. You have to run hosing between all of it, mount the pumps, test it, make sure that it doesn't leak, and then get it working. This is just pre-built for you. It's a sealed system. All the fluid in here is not going anywhere. It's just built in, ready to go. So all you got to do is mount it. So this is a very good, very efficient system uh, from Corsair. And I actually use it. It actually works very, very well, uh, comparable to the highest, highest, highest end air coolers. Uh, the performance is about the same. Uh, another one you have, can't go wrong with this, the Domino ALC uh, from Coolit Systems. Very simple to use. Again, looks really cool if you have a clear side of case because it has this whole uh, display in the front that lights up. Basically, does the exact same thing. It's a pre-sealed, pre-constructed system. It has the liquid already in it. It has the pump built in. It has the radiator built in. And you get a fan. You mount it all up. And you basically have a very simple water cooling system. It'll be a little bit quieter than an air cooler. It'll perform a little bit better than a high quality air cooler. And it'll be right on par as far as performance with the super high end uh, air coolers. And as far as price goes, they're about the same. So a high end air cooler will cost you about 70, 80 bucks. This will cost you about 70, 80 bucks. Same thing with the Corsair. Very comparably priced. So good stuff. Uh, also, finally, uh, one more type of cooler uh, that is becoming a little bit more popular. Uh, this is Peltier cooling or thermoelectric cooling. Now, there's a few different names for this, the Thomson effect, the Seebeck effect. But basically, it's the Peltier effect. And what it does is it creates a direct conversion of a thermal difference to a current and vice versa, a current to a thermal difference. So basically, you apply electricity to one side of a plate. And on the other side, uh, one part of the plate will get cold. The other side will get hot. So basically, uh, what we're looking here is the ultra uh, ultra cooler. This is a Peltier cooler as well. It's the black edition. This is their latest model. Uh, very efficient design. Works very well. It's got a small fan on the front. Doesn't really need a big fan because this is not actually the CPU cooler. This is the 
uh, heat exchanger for the Peltier. The Peltier is what's creating uh, the heat, di the thermal difference. So basically, right in here, you have a thermal plate uh, that you're going to run current through, and that current is going to create a cold side on the bottom and a hot side on the top. The hot side is going to get dispersed by the cooling fins and by the fan. The cool side is going to make sure that your CPU stays nice and cool. Now, the same type of technology uh, is used in this uh, Cooler Master V10 unit. Now this is a big, big unit, but it basically does the same thing. It's got a big air cooler, it's got a Peltier cooler with a separate heat exchanger, and then it's got another radiator, uh, another heat exchanger on the side that actually blows air down on your memory. Uh, but basically it's all the same thing and it accomplishes the same tasks. So now, uh, before I move on from here, I want to talk a little bit about, about uh, brackets because you need to make sure that if you're going to be getting a CPU cooler that is not the factory one, that you're getting the right one. So for that, you need to know what type of socket and what type of processor you're using. Uh, basically, the majority of the most modern high-end CPU coolers will come with every bracket, whether it be for AM2, AM3, socket 1156, uh, 1366, or 775, which is your Intel Core 2 series. Uh, it'll come with every single bracket, but some of them, especially some of the budget ones, will only come with one or two of those. And you need to make sure you get the right one. If you're getting a Core i7 system, you have two socket possibilities. You have the 1156 and you have the 1366. You need to make sure that you get the actual right one uh, because if not, you will not be able to mount your CPU cooler to your CPU and that would defeat the whole purpose of upgrading. Also, make sure you use a good quality a thermoelectric grease as we discussed before. Don't put too much. You want to put a little tiny bit, maybe the size of a pea. Uh, you want to squash it down. You're going to see it's going to spread out all the way automatically. It doesn't need to go to all the way to the edges because the chips are actually just in the center of what you see. That's actually a big piece of silicone and the chips are in the middle with the heat spreader on top. So you don't need to worry about getting it all the way to the edges, but you do want to maybe twist it a little bit. And if you're not sure if it filled in perfectly, you might want to take it off, look at it, make sure it, it's seated properly, that you have no holes in the grease and the grease is covering the entire heat spreader. Put it back on uh, and then make sure you bolt it down properly. It's going to make sure and ensure that you get all uh, the cooling efficiency of your cooler. So uh, those are some helpful hints. Hopefully uh, it'll help you, encourage you to buy a bigger CPU cooler and maybe encourage you to do a slight overclock uh, on your processor. It's going to give you a, bit, a little bit more performance uh, and it's going to save you money in the long run because rather than spending you know, $250 on a processor, you might get one that's clocked a little slower but has everything else the same and all you need to do is overclock it a little bit and now you're at the performance of the higher end product. You paid less and you got a cool CPU cooler out of it. It's going to increase the lifespan, it's going to run cooler, it's going to make less noise. Uh, so those are all positives. Uh, feel free if you have any questions to go ahead and email me right here and I'll see you guys next time.